zero accounting software, payroll and employee reports. Get ready to be an office hero with zero. Here we are in our custom zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, scrolling in a bit, holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175%. Zoom in, opening the demo company by selecting the reset item, resetting the data and opening the demo at the same time. We're gonna open or duplicate a few tabs so that we can put our reports in them. Major financial statement reports as we do every time, right clicking the tab up top, duplicating it, right click the duplicated tab to double duplicate another duplication that is in the middle tab. We're then gonna to go to the accounting dropdown. We're gonna to go to the balance sheet and open it up, tab to the right, skip to the left and tab to the right. We're gonna then go to the accounting dropdown and this time the income statement, the P&L, the profit and the loss. Back to the middle tab. We want to go to the date drop down, customize the date and bring it up to 2022. And as of the end of 2022 update, that's the setup process we do every time. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So now we're gonna look at some of the payroll reports. Payroll is a little bit tricky for a couple different reasons. One is that it's kind of hard to run in a demo type of file because it's something that kind of needs to be updated and up to date all the time. It's also usually an add on type of feature in most accounting software, not just zero as it is here in zero as well. If you go to the drop down and scroll down here, you can see that you have your payroll powered by Gusto. Uh, options. It's an, like an add on type of feature that we talked about in a prior presentation. The other thing is that payroll oftentimes in the United States, for example, is going to be combined with a whole bunch of tax and regulation obligations as well. Some of those might be linked together with kind of like human resource obligation, other kind of laws related to employment as well, and therefore can be complex to the point that it's not just an accounting challenge, but it's its own kind of specialty area. So generally you would want to, if you're gonna be processing payroll through zero, to obviously pay for the payroll and not try to do the payroll by hand because it's one of those types of things that usually you want to not uh, tinker with. You wanna get it right the first time because tinkering with it, often it's gonna cost a lot more than the adage of measure twice, cut once. There's sometimes the one adage is good, sometimes the other adage is good. I'm arguing here that the adage of get it right the first time, measure twice, cut once is the way to go typically here. Now the other option that you have is to hire a third party payroll provider like a Paychex or, or, or an ADP, I'm not advertising for them, I'm just saying, and they can then help you to process the payroll and keep in alignment with possibly some of the human resources requirements as well as the reporting requirements. And then our job would, would simply be to make sure that our financial statements are reported properly in that event. So let's just take a quick look at the flow chart before we look at the payroll items. Note that we cut this out by the flow. So vendor section, meaning we're paying for goods and services. Cash is basically going out at the end of the day customer section, we're selling stuff, we expect goods, we expect money to be coming in at the end of the day. The employee cycle at its simplest form is really just part of the, the vendor cycle. We're paying for goods and services. However, once again, because the law gets in, in and kind of tinkers with stuff or messes stuff up, forcing us to be a tax collector, we got payroll withholdings in the United States and we also might have benefits that's why it becomes more complex. The general process for payroll, so we can understand the forms that we would need to generate, 
is that we track the time. We might not need to do that within zero, but we're gonna track the time in some way if we've gotta use time in order to process the payroll. From an accounting standpoint, we process the payroll here and we issue the paycheck. So we basically issue the paychecks whenever we decide to do so, typically weekly, semi-weekly, bi-monthly, uh, or, or monthly. And when we process the paycheck, it's not just a decrease to cash and recording payroll expense, but we're also withholding things in the United States, payroll taxes, federal income tax, social security, Medicare, as well as our portion of payroll taxes, social security and Medicare as the employer. And then we might have federal unemployment tax, FUTA type of tax as well. And then we're gonna have to pay the stuff that we took from the employees and our taxes over and above their taxes and pay them to the institution. We also might have things that we need to uh, uh, include, which are in benefits, like a 401k plan, health insurance, which are often run through the payroll and are voluntary as opposed to mandatory withholdings. So on top of that, in order to track all this kind of tax reporting, the government, the, the federal government wants quarterly reporting and yearly reporting. Quarterly reporting being the 941 uh, forms typically, reporting social security, Medicare, federal income tax, and then the yearly reporting, reporting forms 940, Federal Unemployment Tax Act, FUTA, as well as uh, the W-2s and the W-3s. So hopefully we're either paying a third party or we're paying zero to help us to do all that, right? To track the pay stubs, to track the reports, to help us to, f to prepare the reporting reports that we need to do for the, for the federal government, the quarterly, the yearly, as well as possibly state obligations, which could have their own state taxes depending on in the United States, which state you're in because the state taxes will differ from state to state because they have the capacity to tax in their own, however they want to tax. So it starts to get quite complex is the point. Now, knowing that then the accounts that are going to be on the balance sheet and the income statement, because we've talked before that the all other reports are basically giving more detail about one or multiple line items on the balance sheet and income statement. That will be the case with payroll reports as well, but they're, they're going to have this added feature of also having to account for, for all these reporting requirements in terms of reporting on the pay stub year to date, as well as the current period and for reporting the external forms quarterly and yearly. So what you would expect on the balance sheet and the income statement, which we don't have here because it's just the demo version, but we do have some sample payroll reports, is possibly payroll liabilities down here, which would be representing what we would have withheld but not yet paid for withholdings like federal income tax, social security, Medicare, and, uh, and voluntary withholdings for like benefits, IRA and, and health insurance and that kind of stuff. And then on the income statement, we would have uh, payroll expense. We have, we have payroll expense right here on the income statement and possibly breaking out the payroll taxes as well. So those are gonna be the expense items generated through the payroll. Okay, given that, let's right click and duplicate a tab again and look at our payroll tax reports. Accounting dropdown, reports, and let's go, I'm just gonna type in payroll. Well, we could scroll down, I think it's in its own section. And so we've got the payroll for payroll reports. We've got a payroll run by employee. So this is gonna give us an employee by employee breakout. And I could run this for multiple periods. Let's take it for the full year here. And let's just, just to be consistent with what we have in our income statement. So we'll go from January 1st to December 31st. And then we got our, our employees down below. So we've got the time, and this is similar layout that you might imagine on like a, a paycheck stub. And I'll pull out the trusty calculator just to, so we can kind of think through what's happening. We've got the, the ordinary time, the 5472, plus if they worked overtime, which you might have different regulations on how you have to report overtime, vacation, which might be broke out differently. There's the total on the time. The federal withholding. This number is gonna be determined by some kind of tables that you're gonna to have to look up, which is why it's quite nice to use software that can do that automatically uh, based on the W-4 information, which includes things like marital status and, and other kind of 
complicated stuff, but uh, that, that's what we have to follow in order to do our obligation as the employer to get that number correct. And then we've got the FICA, which is usually just the 6260 times 0 0.062. So, so it looks a little bit different here. I'm not sure exactly, maybe the, maybe, the, but in any case, that's the, it's usually more of a flat tax. So it's usually more of a straightforward kind of tax. Uh, but there it is. And then you got the payroll tax payable. Then we've got the FICA employer. This is, oh, this is the FICA tax, which includes Social Security and Medicare. So Social Security is 0.062 plus 0.0145 or 0.0765 times the 6260. And it's still, I'm still not getting it there. But in any case, that's, that's the FICA is the Medicare and Social Security. And then you've got the employer. This is what the employer has to pay over and over above matching in essence the social security and medicare generally and i got the right number on that one so something is a little bit different in this something's not something in the income's not being included in the fica for the employer so that's unusual but in any case whatever it's just an example we'll, we'll might dive into this more in the example problem and then federal uh, unemployment tax at futa is going to be the employer tax, which is usually fairly small, but it's only paid by the employer, not the employee. It's not pulled out of the wages. SUTA, state unemployment tax, same thing, but on the state side. So this is the, the employer contribution on the total. Now the net pay that the, the, they're actually getting is 6260 minus what we pulled out from their taxes, minus the 1292.69. And that's the 496731. So from a pay stub standpoint, this person got this much wages minus this. So the pay that they should have gotten to their bank account is that. And then we paid the 697.99 over and above for the employer portion of the payroll taxes, which is Social Security, Medicare, FUTA, employer portion, SUTA, state taxes if necessary and uh, and futa which is an employer tax now you could do this for each employee which you would need to do to report this information to the employees because we have to give each paycheck a stub that tells them how much we took from them in terms of withholdings on a year-to-date basis as well as a period by period pay period by period basis but say if you had some external person like an adp or paychecks doing that then then in your books, what you what you can kind of do is think about the payroll as if all your employees were kind of one big employee, right? And you can add all these together and think about, okay, the wages for a total, total wages as if they were all one employee, 6260 plus the, the wages for this person plus 5890 plus the, plus the 5735 is would be your your wages for as if they were all one employee and then you could subtract out what, what was withheld for all of them in other words you can think of the journal entry in essence on an employee by employee basis or you can kind of aggregate and think about the journal entry in aggregate for the full payroll it usually works out uh, quite nicely to think about it that way okay if i right click and duplicate this again let's take a look at another report Go into the accounting drop down reports. Let's go down to the payroll. Let's run it by uh, pay type. Let's do that one and bring it from January, January and through December. And you've got all the pay types here. So, so we've included, we could filter by the pay types. So we've got the wages. So now we've got the full, there's that 17 that I added up before, 17885. Does that tie out to the income statement? You would think it would, but I think, so they kind of, they didn't, they've, they're doing funny stuff to the income statement as they rule for their practice problem, I think, because the payroll, oh yeah, it does, it's right there. There's the 17885. And then in the payroll tax expense would add up if I added those three up for the payroll taxes should tie out as well. So that's nice. Okay, so then we're going to go over here. So then the taxes are at the 36, uh, 369325. If I go back on over here to the taxes, 
notice it, that doesn't tie out because this tax over here is 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 looking not just at the employer portion of the tax so what we break out is only the employer portion of the tax and down here is the uh, employer contributions okay let's take a look at another look i'm going to right click on this one again duplicate again and let's see the other reports for payroll checking them out scrolling down we're gonna we're gonna go into this run run by item so you can think of the payroll items the items being those underlying things that we have to set up for payroll uh similar to the items for inventory items when we in, enter like invoices and stuff so i'll say that's that one okay so now we've got it broken out by federal withholding the fica employee portion the fica employer portion futa tax so these are you know the the inventory or the, i'm sorry the payroll items which can be useful this report to kind of tie out to the different kinds of 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 quarterly reports that you would be doing meaning the 941s have the federal income tax and fica both employer and employee the 940 has the futa so if i was looking at the employer taxes then this is an employee tax this this is then employer tax right there so i could take the 1368.2 plus the futa is an employer tax plus the four meaning it's not coming out of the the employees checks and then overtime payroll tax payable suta employer contribution so that looks like it's an employer on suta on the state side that's the 482.9 and so that's the 199418 let's see if that ties out to the income statement for the taxes it doesn't they got a one they got 133744 payroll tax 1337 so that's interesting not sure exactly why that doesn't tie up but it's a practice problem i'm not gonna you know i think they might have changed the data here due to the fact that they're rolling up the data but in any case i won't i won't dig into it too much here we'll just overview them at this point maybe when we go through the practice problem we'll go in more detail but just note that the payroll is a whole field in and of itself just due to the complexity of the taxes and reporting and human resources and whatnot so let's go to this one and run this from january january through december so and this one you've got kind of like a, a ledger uh, look for it a payroll kind of ledger so now you, where you've got it listed on a horizontal kind of fashion the gross pay and then the taxes and then the net pay so meaning you've got the gross pay the 8797 minus the taxes withholdings 2144.95 gets the net pay so this is kind of what you would expect reported in essence on an employee paycheck but you're doing it kind of in aggregate as if all employers are like one employee if I drill down on this because we have the capacity to do so, then it's going to pull me into the summary page. So those are the major uh, payroll kind of uh, reports. Payroll is a specialty area. You want to make sure if you're a bookkeeper that you're deciding how you want to deal with payroll. Do you want to be working with an outside provider of payroll? Do you want to be processing payroll within the system and picking up clients that need that or, or not? And, uh, and when you're setting up the payroll, you want to do it right generally from the first time, because oftentimes if you're doing it wrong, it doesn't come to light until the end of the year when everything falls apart and you're trying to do everything at, at that point. It's no good because now you got to do W-2s, W-3s, the, the 940s, the 941s and taxes for the all at the same time. So you don't want it falling apart at the end of the year, if at all possible. Thank you.